Hello again and welcome back to Insight Check. Today's video is going to be a follow-up to my Character Sheet Explained video, so if you've not had the chance to watch that, go ahead and do so and then come back whenever you're ready. Before we begin, I do want to give a huge shout out to MPMB's Character Sheet. That's the one that I'm using right here. Um, it is amazing. It's really great to, to be able to kind of edit things in real time and get uh, in, in the moment adjustments and updates. There's tons of other ways that you can do this, either by hand or you can use uh, online tools such as uh, Roll20 or D&D Beyond, but I absolutely love this solution. It's amazing. Uh, I will have a link in the description to be able to use it yourself as well. Also, if you do like this type of content, please like and subscribe, and please leave me a comment down below. Let me know if you have any more questions or if you have any suggestions for types of videos you'd like to see in the future. All right, so without too much further ado, let's just jump straight on into it. So we're going to start at the top right corner of the sheet, the same place that we started last time. Um, I have already pre-filled in some of this information here. So for this video, I'm going to be creating a first level Path of the Berserker Barbarian. Presumably you would have already gone through and chosen your, your character, uh, chosen your class and background and race. Uh, I've chosen, like I said, a Path of the Berserker Barbarian. I've also selected the background as a soldier and I've selected his class and I selected his race to be Dragonborn. Um, but, you know, please feel free to take some time to go through all the different options. There's so many choices you have available to you that have been uh, printed through the player's handbook or through any of the other multitude of other uh, campaign sources that are available. But if you're unsure, always take some time, chat with your DM and figure out what works best to kind of fit the aesthetic that you're really looking for with your character. So the next thing that we're going to take a look at here is, <clears throat> so the next thing we're going to take a look at here is probably the most important thing on your character sheet, and that's how we actually determine your ability scores. <clears throat> All right, so your ability scores are listed down the left side of the sheet. We have your strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. So these are your main six stats, as we explained last time, and they pretty much determine just about everything for your character. So how exactly do we fill these out? So it's important to note that there are two numbers. There's something called your ability score and the ability modifier. When you're initially creating these, these numbers, where you're, when you're generating these numbers, you are going to be creating an ability score, and then you'll be getting a ability modifier, which is based on that score. So what exactly do I mean by that? Well, there's a couple different ways you can generate your ability score. The player's handbook recommends three, either rolling dice for it, there's also something called the standard array, and there's also called point by. All right, so when you're rolling for stats, there's tons of different methods of doing it. So talk with your DM if this is the way that they want to be rolling it. But in the player's handbook, they suggest uh, the, the common method of rolling 4d6 and you drop the lowest number. So let's say, say for example, you roll a 6, 6, 6, and a 1. You drop the 1 because it's the lowest number there, and then you add your 6, 6, 6 together to get a score of 18. This is the best possible score that you can get. So we are playing a Barbarian. Strength is pretty important for a Barbarian. So we're going to assume that that's our number. We're going to throw an 18 into our Barbarian's Strength score. What you will notice immediately is generated here is a plus 4 modifier on top. So that's why it's a modifier, because you see a plus 4. So what exactly does that mean? Well, the modifier increases by 1 for every two numbers of the strengths of your score above 10. So I know that sounds a little bit confusing, but let's, here, bear with me. So let's say our score was 10. You're going to see our modifier changes to 0. So that's your baseline. If we change it to 11, it's going to stay 0. It has not gone up by two numbers yet. But if we change it to 12, suddenly it's going to go to plus 1. So this is how our modifiers work. Whenever we go up by 2, they will, uh, they will also, the modifier will increase. So we can continue the same pattern here. If we change it to 13, it'll stay as plus 1. But then if we go ahead and change it to 14, it will go to plus 2. So this will continue over time. This is exactly how this, this uh, works for all of your stats. It's not just for your strength score. Every single one will work exactly the same. And to go in the opposite direction, um, to go down, it is very similar, but it starts kind of right away. So again, if we go to 10, it's at 0. And if we put in a score of 9, it's going to go right away to minus 1. 8 will stay at minus 1, but then if we go to 7, you'll see it jumps to minus 2. So it's really important to get a good understanding of how these numbers are actually generated and what they mean. Whenever you're playing the game, you're never going to be really using this score. So we rolled an 18. You're never really going to be using this score for anything. It's pretty much there 
just to determine your modifier, which is going to be the, the important thing that you're going to be using. It's going to be what's actually modifying your dice rolls, which is why it's called a modifier. So we did roll the 6, 6, 6, and 1, so we're going to put an 18 in our strength score, which gives us a plus 4 strength, which is awesome. That's huge. What is important to know is that you don't actually need to put in these scores in the order that you roll them. So we started with strength just because we decided on 18 for that score, but typically you would roll all your stats and then you would choose to place them in whatever order is best for you. If you roll really high stats as a barbarian, uh, you'd want to put the big numbers ideally in strength or maybe constitution, and you kind of go down from there. So um, let's take a look here. Let's say for our dexterity, um, we're going to go with uh, 4, 4, 4, and 3. So that's still, we drop the 3 as the lowest one, and that means our dexterity score is going to be 12. And that again gives us a plus 1. Uh, if we take a look at our constitution, so let's say Barbarian's constitution is pretty important, so um, we are going to go with a 6, 5, and 4. So 6 with 5 is 11, 4, uh, plus 4 is 16. So we have a 16 constitution score, which gives us a constitution modifier of plus 3. Intelligence, you know, we're going to say we're not we're not all that intelligent. Let's give us a, an intelligence score of 8. So that's going to give us a minus 1 to our intelligence score. Wisdom, yeah, you know, maybe we can see a little bit. We're pretty good. Uh, let's let's go with an 11 on this one. So we'll keep it with an odd number. So that's going to give us a, still an ability modifier of 0, which is still important going forward into the future. And we can explain a little bit about that in a minute. And finally, for our charisma, let's go with, uh, let's put a charisma score of 13. So we're going to be at plus 1 in our charisma score. All right, so now that we've generated all these scores using our dice, we're not quite done yet. So race when you pick your race in D&D, you will also gain... Uh, a benefit of some stats. Now, this has changed a little bit it, with uh, Tasha's Cauldron and everything. It has kind of allowed us to um, to move those numbers around in any way that we want, but we're just going to stick with the, the original method for now, for the purposes of this video. So it does show us here, if we highlight over the score here, it shows that as a Dragonborn, we get plus two strength and plus one to our charisma. So that does not adjust the modifier, that only adjusts the score. So if we add two to our 18, Suddenly, our strength mod our strength score becomes twenty, and our strength modifier will change to plus five. Uh, it also gives us a plus. Uh, I think it was plus one to charisma. Yeah, we get plus one to charisma as a dragonborn. So let's change that from a thirteen to a fourteen, and suddenly our charisma goes up to plus two. It's really important that you remember to add all these extra bonuses in that you that you accumulate. They will have a huge effect in determining the the overall power level of your character. As a side note, as I did mention about Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, um, you can see here as the Dragonborn, it, it allows us to add plus two to strength and plus one to charisma. The the updated rules that have been created with that uh, with that book kind of say that you can take that plus two and plus one and apply them to anything. So if you wanted it to be, you still wanted to be a Dragonborn, but you didn't want to be a Barbarian, maybe you were a Ranger, you don't want to add two to your strength if you wanted to be a Dragonborn Ranger, maybe you wanted to add plus two to your Dexterity and plus one to your Wisdom, you could do that as well. But before you do that, always talk to your DM and find out what kind of rules, uh, rules that they want to be using. So now that we've got all our ability scores decided on using our dice and filling in the bonuses from our racial features, let's take a look at a little bit more of the nitty gritty. Let's take a look at the skills. So if we take a look right at the top here, it says acrobatics and then brackets, it's dex. So this is a dexterity based skill. So this number in the, in the box here will represent exactly what's written in our dexterity score. So we see our, our dexterity modifier rather, sorry. Our dexterity modifier is plus one. So our acrobatic score is also plus one. If you take a look at the next one on the list, animal handling is wisdom based, the number is zero, our wisdom modifier is zero. Take a look at arcana, it's intelligence based, our score is minus one, our intelligence scores also our intelligence modifier is also minus one. Let's take a look at athletics. Athletics is a strength based skill, but it says plus seven here. If we look at our strength, our strength score, our strength score, or our strength modifier rather, is plus five. So why is it seven? Well, we can see this bullet is filled in black over here, which means that we are something called proficient in athletics. So we're particularly good at it. We're great at running and jumping and, and lifting and pushing things really quickly. We're proficient in it. So what that allows us to do is it allows us to add something called our proficiency bonus to that score. As we can see right over here, our proficiency bonus at first level is plus two. So we were able to add two to our ability score. So we're able to add plus two to our ability modifier to create a higher number. So we can see athletics is plus seven. So that allows us to add the plus five from our strength and the plus two from our proficiency bonus to arrive at plus seven. 
So that will apply to any of the skills that we are proficient in. So if you look at intimidation, for example, this is a charisma-based skill. Our charisma score is plus two, but our intimidation is plus four. So again, we can add two from our proficiency bonus to see that we're now sitting at plus four for our intimidation score. This exact same thing will also apply to saving throws. We can see we are proficient in strength saving throws, which is why this is at plus seven. So it's again, the plus five from our strength and the plus two from our proficiency bonus. We're also proficient in constitution saves. So here, the plus three from our constitution and the plus two from our proficiency bonus means our constitution saves sit at plus five. All right, so now let's take a quick look back at our skills here. So we can see that we are proficient in athletics and intimidation, but we're not quite done with that just yet. Um, conveniently on this sheet, when you hover over it, it does show the, the additional options that we need to fill in. So you can see as a soldier, we are proficient in athletics and intimidation, which we can already see. These are already checked off, which is perfect. But then as a barbarian, it says we get a choice of two from animal handling, athletics, intimidation, nature, perception, and survival. So when you're thinking about adding these secondary proficiencies, you really want to think about think about your character and, and who they are and what kinds of things you would like them to be to be good at. Is your barbarian particularly adept and astute with animals? Maybe if they are, then you know, give them that, that proficiency bonus with animal handling, then they'll get an extra plus two. Um, are they uh, are they really really perceptive and aware of their surroundings? Then you know we can choose perception, which actually is what I'm going to choose here. So I'm going to give us a bonus to perception. The reason I'm choosing that is our our barbarian is a soldier, so you know he's probably spent a lot of time on battlefronts and maybe observing the things around him. So just say he's really really good at doing that kind of thing. So we're going to give him a, a proficiency in perception. And then what other choices do we get here? Athletics we already have, so we don't have to worry about that. Intimidation we already have, nature, perception, and survival. So I'm going to give him a bonus to survival as well. So we're going to give him a plus two modifier to survival. So just think about your character and think about the things that you want them to be good at and what kind of makes sense for their backstory and their, and their life over time. And then you can choose the proficiencies that best suit them. So as a quick aside, you also see there is a small bubble next to our proficiency bonus here. This is something known as expertise. Throughout the game, you can obtain expertise in a particular skill, which will effectively allow you to double your proficiency bonus in that. So if we suddenly be, uh, gain expertise in athletics, this plus seven will go to plus nine because we're gonna add an additional two from our proficiency bonus, it doubles it. So this will, if we click on expertise here, all of a sudden jumps to plus nine. But since we're not, we do not have expertise, we're just gonna uncheck that. We're gonna remove that right here for us. So leave it at plus seven. All right, so now that we've got all that big stuff out of the way, let's take a look at this middle section again. So let's start with maximum hit points. Your maximum hit points are determined at first level by the highest possible roll of your hit dice plus your constitution modifier. So the hit dice for a barbarian is a d12. Uh, we know that because it just tells us that in the player's handbook. So we start at 12 hit points, but we also add our constitution modifier to that. So if we look back over at our ability scores, our constitution modifier is plus three. So we can add 12 plus three to get 15. So our barbarian will be starting at 15 hit points. Next up is the proficiency bonus. We talked about this before. You don't have to worry about this. This will change over time at certain level at certain levels, this will increase. It'll change to plus three, plus four, eventually topping out at plus six. Next over for armor class. So the base armor class is 10, but you can see our armor class here is 14. Barbarians have a feature called unarmored defense, which essentially allows them to add their dexterity and constitution scores together to generate their armor class. So you add that to 10. So if you look at our dexterity modifier, it's plus one. Our constitution modifier is plus three. So we add one plus three is four, and then 10 plus four is 14. And we arrive at our armor class. Going down to initiative over here, uh, this is sitting at plus one. As I explained in the last video, initiative is a dexterity-based skill. So this will be exactly related to our dexterity modifier, which again is plus one. Our initiative score is also plus one. So moving on down again, if we look at our hit dice in this section over here, it says we are level one, so our hit dice is a D12 plus three. Um, you have a number of hit dice equal to your level. So at second level, you will have two hit dice. At third level, you have three hit dice. So what this lets you do is it lets you regenerate some hit points um, whenever you, you take a short rest. And you, again, you add your constitution modifier to that every single time you roll. So it's a D12 plus three. It's important to note that whenever you do level up, you will be gaining hit points, but it's not always the maximum. 
So at the second level, you will actually roll your d12. So let's say you roll a five, and you still add your constitution modifier to that. So five plus three would be eight, so we would add eight. So at second level, our barbarian would be sitting at 23 hit points. So you, you roll it out the second time, and then from every other time beyond that as well. So the last section that I want to take a look at here are attacks. So we can see with our barbarian, we have a great axe, which is an example of a martial weapon. Uh, and we can see if we go back up here that with our weapons, we are proficient in martial weapons. That's why this has a uh, black filled in circle around martial weapons. What that's important is because that allows us to add our proficiency bonus when we are attacking, when we are trying to hit with that weapon. So we can see here a great axe is a strength based weapon. It is a melee weapon and it says to hit plus seven. So how is that number generated? Well, that is generated by using our strength modifier and adding our proficiency bonus to it. So our strength modifier again was plus five and our proficiency bonus is plus two. If we add those together, we are at plus seven. As those numbers increase, you'll be able to hit, it will be a little bit easier to hit. So when your proficiency bonus becomes plus three, this will turn into plus eight. So you'll be adding that number to every time you attack using your d20. So you'll roll a d20, add seven, compare that against the monster's AC and see if you hit them. When you're determining damage, the, the damage dice for a great axe is a d12. And in this case, we will be adding our strength uh, modifier to that score. We know that because it is a strength based weapon. It tells us that here. So we do 1d12 plus five. Very important to remember that you do not add your proficiency bonus to damage. You only add it to the to hit modifier, not to damage. This is just the strength modifier that you add. Uh, and then we can see this. the damage type is slashing. Just important for uh, more for your DM so they can know which type of resistances a specific creature might have. All right, so that's it. I hope you enjoyed this uh, follow-up video and I hope you got a lot of valuable information from it. If you have any additional questions or anything, uh, please feel free to leave a comment below and remember to like and subscribe. It does sincerely help me and I genuinely appreciate it. But other than that, take care.